The waiting is over. The talking is done. The rematch is here. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Let's get it on! There's no doubt about it. I totally lost it. It was extremist. It was some serious stuff going on in my head then. Some serious stuff. Mike was having his best he round. He, he did it again. again. Well, it snapped, and I was no longer fighting um, under the rules. For a sport that's had more than its share of bad moments, the heavyweight championship on June 28th was perhaps an all-time low. The end of the fight was outrageous and grotesque. What should have been a great battle turned into a sick joke. It is complete is just taking swipes at anybody in front of him. Anything from any kind of functional thinking or any kind of rational thinking was totally out the window. I don't know what, um, I don't know what happened that night. I used to know what happened. It's pretty embarrassing. What happened here? He got bit, I think. Evander Holyfield, look out, he's pushed right here, above us by Tyson. Oh my goodness, he's got a bloody right ear. It's just the fact I, I, I taste blood, I tripped, and I just kept, I was just in a zone. I was in that real serious, frantic zone. But I think um, the way I struck out in return, um, that was just something that was unacceptable. According to Tyson, retaliated, he thought, illegal headbutt in Holyfield, which the referee didn't stop. In the second round, this clash of heads caused a deep gash over Tyson's right eye. There's a cut around the right eye of Mike Tyson. Tyson believed the cut would cause the referee to stop the fight. I said, well, this is the round I have to do. I have to win this round big, go for a knockout. I was, I was in trouble. He was butting me. I was blacking out, and I was pretty desperate. You know boxing history. There have been a lot of desperate fighters, but there's never been an incident like that before. Why do you think... It was you that, that took it to that extent, or did that kind of a, a really uh, crazy, sick kind of thing? I don't know. I think I'm the most extremist fighter that ever lived. I just think that's just who I am. Can you give assurances uh, to, to people and, and to the Nevada Commission that it won't happen again? Do you feel sure in your heart that you would never do that again? Listen, nothing's an insurance, okay? Nothing's an insurance in life. But um, it's going to be hard. There's going to be many years before people forget that. It was hard to watch, Mike. I mean, it was hard to watch you bite off a piece of a guy's ear and spit it out on the ring floor. <laughs> you know, it's hard for me to watch it. It's hard for you to watch it. You just watch it in a joking manner. Watch it in a joking manner. I have to watch it in, um, in, a, in a manner of disgust, disdain, and um, just semi-humiliation. Disgust and disdain for yourself that exactly. you did Exactly, yes. Now most people, according to some of the polls that have been done, think that you should be barred for life. What would you say to those people about why you should be reinstated, why you should be allowed to fight again? I really wish um, I, I was um, at liberty to say what I truly wanted to say, but I guess I'm not, huh? Well, you're at liberty. Go ahead and say it. them. That's how I truly feel about them. them. They want to see people beg and mercy and just be at their mercy. I'm not that way with anyone. That's just, this is who I am. And maybe sometimes it's an insecurity. I want to be a defiant person. That's part of my insecurity, but you know, that's just who I am. I can't help who I am. They're jealous, you know what I mean? They're jealous. Look at me, look where I come from. The most desolate, most, um, most um, undesirable place in the lowest circumstances socially in America, probably. Mike Tyson grew up in Brooklyn amidst grinding poverty and crime. At age 12, after a series of arrests, he landed in a New York reformatory where he decided he wanted to make boxing a part of his life. He would beat opponent after opponent, compiling an unbeaten record. At age 20, Tyson became the youngest heavyweight champion in history. There was no one in sight to beat Mike Tyson, except Mike Tyson, which is exactly what happened. Ladies and gentlemen, Robin Gibbons and Mike Tyson. First, his storybook marriage. A street kid wed to glamorous actress Robin Gibbons tumbled in the tabloids with reports of domestic violence. What's it been like, this roller coaster? 
It's been torture. It's been pure hell. A week Someone after the interview, Gibbons filed for divorce. People have the opinion of me that um, I'm granite and nothing, maybe because I give that appearance, because mostly that's my defense mechanism. But if you let the defense mechanism go, what's underneath the granite exterior? Well, I mean, I'm a pretty, pretty, um, very much a very simple human being, very fragile. You're very fragile? Yeah. But just as I'm fragile and kind, I'm also um, ruthless and malicious. I have to defend myself. Mike's self-destruction included an early morning street brawl that left his opponent battered and Mike with a broken hand. A car crash sent him to the emergency room with a concussion. Headlines questioned his violent relationships with women, and Mike took out his frustrations in public. In 1992, a jury convicted Mike Tyson of rape. Even his own attorney called him an animal. He went from the highest paid athlete in the world to a prison inmate. Three years later, he left prison, a converted Muslim, to even bigger celebrity and bigger paydays, earning the most money of any athlete in America, nearly $75 million in 1996 alone. He kept his life clean outside the ring, which had always held the most danger for him. But ironically, inside the ring, where he had always found a safe haven, he ended up that Saturday night in Las Vegas in total disgrace. He just reaches in and bites him. In your uh, apology, you spoke about getting help what have you done about that? Well, I discussed some issues uh, with some prominent psychologists, psychiatrists, and um, do you believe that you do have a problem that you need to change, or you just? Oh, yeah, I know I have a problem. There's no doubt about that. I just, I guess, I'm extremely bored. See, people can't understand how you can be bored. You have homes all over the world. You have access to any place you want to go. You have the money to take advantage of it, and for. For Joe Sixpack or blue collar working people, they just can't imagine that, that you can be bored. I, explain that. I'm tr pretty much an extremist in everything. It's either all or nothing. And I don't, maybe that's, and I think, and I feel that's kind of a sickness being that way. And um, it caused a lot of problems in my life. A lot of problems. I'm, you know, I'm not a stable person. You know, I'm pretty um, sporadic and um, spontaneous. And I, and it's very difficult for people, um, to be honest, very, for, even for people who are my friends and people who are manipulated, people who just hang on. It's very difficult for people to get along with me and be around me. In April, Tyson married Dr. Monica Turner, who lives in Maryland with their children. I think our relationship is great. It's great, but it's just getting better as time goes on. Dr. Monica Turner is a pediatric intern at Georgetown Hospital. Two nights ago, we spoke with them at their Farmington, Connecticut home, one of four they own. They were surrounded by three of their children, their baby son, Amir, who was three months old, Raina, 20 months, and Monica's child from a previous relationship, Gina, age eight. What initially attracted you to him? Initially, I just, I mean, I didn't know him as a person, but I just liked his, um, his outgoing character. I liked that about him, and I thought he was cute. <laughs> You think I was outgoing? <laughs> Were you? How'd you see it in, initially? I guess, uh, I don't know, I just thought it was a pretty girl that probably I was going to score on. I never really got into her that way, because I used to matter, yeah. Most people would assume she had to marry him for his money. I really don't care what they think, to be honest. I mean, if they think that, I really don't care. I mean, I love him for him, you know, and, and I've known him for a long time, and I've known him when things were good, when things were bad, and I just love him either way. I mean, we have a family of kids, and that's what I wanted. And... You want more? Yeah, maybe one or two. You? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> they certainly have enough space for a larger family. Built on 17 acres, this Connecticut mansion has 61 rooms, 18 bedrooms, 38 baths, seven kitchens, a disco, indoor racquetball court, indoor pool, gym, private screening room, and a master bedroom with five televisions. Friends use it more than the Tysons, and it's now on the market for $22 million. It's fun, but you know, this is not my style, this is not me. I stayed here probably four times, this is probably my fifth time here. Is it possible, do you think, for the two of you ever to have a normal life? 
given who he is and what he's all about? Oh, well, as normal as it can be. I mean, as far as you don't have the privacy and that kind of thing that normal people have, he just doesn't have that, you know. But um, as far as in the house, when we're in the house, our life is normal, you know. He, we've got kids and he plays with his children. He's a good father, you know. And in the house, he's, you know, he's different. I mean, he's just daddy. Are you capable of feeling remorse for things you've done wrong in those situations? Of course I'm remorseful, you know what I mean? Because I'm more considerate for people's feelings than they are about mine. Because people have the opinion of me that um, I'm granted and nothing. Maybe because I give that appearance. Because mostly that's my defense mechanism. But if you let the defense mechanism go, what's underneath the granite exterior? Well, I mean, I'm a pretty, pretty, um, very much a very simple human being. Very fragile. You're very fragile? Yeah. But just as I'm fragile and kind, I'm also um, ruthless and malicious. I have to defend myself. Mike's self-destruction included an early morning street brawl that left his opponent battered and Mike with a broken hand. A car crash sent him to the emergency room with a concussion. Headlines questioned his violent relationships with women, and Mike took out his frustrations in public. You give sometimes the impression that these things just roll off your back. But deep down, do they affect you? Well, they do roll off your back, but they leave skid marks. Watch, watch, watch. In 1992, a jury convicted Mike Tyson of rape. Even his own attorney called him an animal. He went from the highest paid athlete in the world to a prison inmate. Three years later, he left prison, a converted Muslim, to even bigger celebrity and bigger paydays, earning the most money of any athlete in America nearly $75 million in 1996 alone. He kept his life clean outside the ring, which had always held the most danger for him. But ironically, inside the ring, where he had always found a safe haven, he ended up that Saturday night in Las Vegas in total disgrace. He just reaches in and bites him. In your uh, apology, you spoke about getting help. What have you done about that? Well, I discussed some issues uh, with some prominent psychologists, psychiatrists, and um... Are you going through it, just going through the motions, or do you really think that you need to change some things about yourself? Sometimes changing is scary, and maybe some things about my life is kind of scary to change. And you may feel a little um, helpless in changing, but, you know, we're working on it. I don't know why I'm afraid to change. I change in increments. I mean, time periods, and it's just, it's not going to happen just overnight. But do you think it's a necessary thing? I think change is necessary. And I can tell you, well, this thing is working, and I'm great, and I'm going to be a great person, and I might even go for Congress, and I may do this. But that's not the reality of the situation. Do you believe in your heart that you do have a problem that you need to change, or you just... Oh, yeah, I know I have a problem. There's no doubt about that. I just, I guess I'm extremely bored. See, people can't understand how you can be bored. You have homes all over the world. You have access to any place you want to go. You have the money to take advantage of it. And for, for Joe Sixpack or blue collar working people, they just can't imagine that, that you can be bored. I, explain that. I'm tr pretty much an extremist in everything. It's either all or nothing. And I don't, maybe that's, and I think, and I feel that's kind of a sickness being that way. And um, it's caused a lot of problems in my life, a lot of problems. What kind of problems? You just, you just never get enough of anything, and it caused a lot of personal problems. A lot of people who um, I believe cared about me, and I believed I cared about them, no longer we no longer associate in that uh, matter anymore. You know, and you just you just lose um, you lose um, the essence of things that are so um, so simple, like love or yes, friendship. Yes, you you just totally just forget about those. The essence of that is totally lost sometimes, I believe. But you're not going to change it if you don't want to change it. We'll see. I'm, you know, I'm not God. You know, I would like to be a stable person. That's what I am. I'm not a stable person. You know, I'm pretty um, sporadic and um, spontaneous. And I, it was very difficult for people, um, to be honest, for, for, even for people who are my friends and people who are manipulated, people who just hang on. It's very difficult for people to get along with me and be around me. In April, Tyson married Dr. Monica Turner who lives in Maryland with their children. Is it tough for you to have a reasonable marriage, have a reasonable relationship, given what you've said about yourself? 
Like I said, I'm a difficult person to live with. You know, I mean, she doesn't have an, she doesn't have an easy time with me. Is the relationship working? Pretty much so. But it's because she's putting more work in than I am. But she's a good woman. I really hate to lose her, you know. I mean, it's just a part of life, things like that happen, but I truly hate to lose her. Do you think that's a possibility? Anything's a possibility in life, but um, if I do, it would just be my fault.